Hello everyone. The next topic which I will be discussing here is about the human neural system. Or I can say that it is a human nervous system. So living organisms, they adapt to their moves and positions in response to the environmental changes for their protection or to their advantage. So when, a, when an entity reacts to the changes in its surrounding, it is referred to as a stimulus. So what is it referred to as? It is referred to as a stimulus. While the reaction to the stimulus is referred to as a response. Now there are common stimuli which is sound, light, air, heat, smell, taste, water and gravity. So these are some of the types of the stimulus. So if I take an example here for instance. Think of burning your figure or fracturing your bone without any pain sensation. It may certainly sound like a superpower or an ideal situation where you burn your finger or you got hurt and you got fractured, but you are not you are not seeing any pain sensation. So it will be an ideal situation. So when it comes to this standpoint of survive, it, survival, it can be disastrous. So it is the characteristic of or behavior of a living entity to respond to the stimuli with the intention of the nervous system. So this is how a nervous system will work. Now the nervous system or the neural system it is a complex network of neurons specialized to carry the messages. So let's start with the introduction first that the nervous system it is a complex network of nerves and cells that carry messages to and from the brain and the spinal cord to the various parts of the body. The complexity of the nervous system increases as we move towards the higher animals. So the complexity will increase. Now the nervous system directs our body's reaction to the world and also controls most of our internal functions. So in the human body, the neural system integrates the activities of the organs based on the stimuli which the neurons detect and transmit. So now I will be discussing that nervous system includes the two types that is the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. So these are the two types here. Now if I talk about the central nervous system. So central nervous system is also called as the central processing unit. So what is it called? So it is also called as the central processing unit of the body and it consists of the brain and the spinal cord. So it consists of two main parts, the brain and the spinal cord. So both of these we will be discussing in detail. The first I will discuss about is the brain. Brain, one of the most important largest and central organ of the nervous system. So it is considered as an important organ of the nervous system. It is the control unit of the nervous system and helps us in discovering new things, remembering and understanding and making decisions also. And a lot more functions. Now it is enclosed within the skull and provides frontal, frontal, lateral and dorsal protection. Now this brain, it has been further divided into three parts. So forebrain is also being described here. Then comes the midbrain and the hindbrain. So these are the three major parts. Now I will be talking about each of these parts in detail. First I will talk about is the brain. So it is the interior part of the brain which consists of cerebrum, hypothalamus and the thalamus. Now 
द सेरिब्रम इट फॉर्म्स द मेजर पार्ट ऑफ द ह्यूमन ब्रेन द हेमिस्फेयर दे आर कनेक्टेड बाय अ ट्रैक्ट ऑफ द नर्व फाइबर्स व्हिच इज कॉल्ड एज द कॉर्पस कॉलोसम एंड द लेयर ऑफ सेल्स व्हिच कवर्स द सेरिब्रल हेमिस्फेयर इट इज कॉल्ड एज द सेरिब्रल कॉर्टेक्स and the cerebral cortex it contains motor area sensory areas and large regions that are neither clearly sensory nor motor in the function and uh, the other things uh, like the cerebrum they wraps around a structure which is called as a thalamus which is a major coordinating center for the sensory and the motor signaling so it is for the sensory and the motor signal another very important part which i have already said that this is a hypothalamus so hypothalamus it is lies at the base of the thalamus and it can it contains a number of centers which control body temperature so it control the body temperature urge for eating and drinking it contains several groups of neurosecretory cells and various hypothalamic hormones so these are the three parts of the forebrain which i have discussed now i will talk about this the midbrain which is located between the thalamus hypothalamus of the forebrain and the pons of the hindbrain so mid which means it lies in the middle of the thalamus and the pons of the hindbrain so there is a canal which is called as a cerebral aqueduct which passes through the midbrain there is a dorsal portion of the midbrain which consists mainly of four round swellings called the corpora quadrima and hindbrain and midbrain form the brain stem so this was about the midbrain next i will talk about is the hindbrain so hindbrain comprise of the pons cerebellum and the medulla so these are the three main parts of the hindbrain so the pons i will talk about each in detail so first second and third so first is pons which consist of fiber tracts that interconnect different regions of the brain then next i will talk about is the cerebellum which has very convoluted surface in order to provide the additional space for many more neurons then comes the medulla which contains center and which controls the respiration then there is a cardiovascular reflexes and the gastric secretions so this was about all the three parts of the brain next i will be talking here is about the spinal cord so in the first part only i told you that the central nervous system has been divided further into two parts that is the brain and the spinal cord now comes the spinal cord so spinal cord it is a cylindrical bundle of nerve fibers and associated tissues that are enclosed within the spine and it connects all the parts of the body to the brain so it will connect all the parts of the body to the brain it begins in the continuation with the medulla and extends downwards and it is enclosed in a bony cage called the vertebral column and is being surrounded by membrane which is called as the mix so it the spinal cord region from which a pair of spinal nerves originates is called the spinal segment and both the motor and the sensory nerves are located in the spinal cord so i have told you that this nervous system or neural system has been divided into two parts first is the peripheral first is the central and the second is the peripheral nervous system now if i talk about the peripheral nervous system here then it has been further divided into two parts that is the somatic nervous system and autonomic nervous system 
So peripheral nervous system, if I talk about, it is the lateral part of the nervous system. So what is it? It is the lateral part of the nervous system that develops from the central nervous system and connects different parts of the body with the CNS. We carry out both voluntary and involuntary actions with the help of the peripheral nerves. Now, the somatic nervous system. It is a key for carrying messages throughout the body. So it is a neural system that controls all the voluntary actions in the body by transmitting impulses from CNS to the skeletal muscle. So it consists of somatic nerves. And this system processes sensory information from external stimuli as well as motor information which then carries signal to and from the CNS. It has been, it consists of motor neurons and sensory neurons. So sensory neurons and the motor neurons. So these are the two terms which has been identified in the somatic nervous system. The next I will talk about is the autonomic nervous system. So it is the system, neural system which is involved in the involuntary that is involved in the involuntary actions like the regulation of physiological functions for example it will include the breathing heart rate digestion and allows these important functions to take place without conscious throughout the work automatically it has been further divided into two parts the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system now we will be discussing both these nervous system in detail now so first i will talk about is the sympathetic nervous system so it mostly comes into play during the time when the body feels it to respond to threatening stimuli so this part of the nervous system is also called as the fight or flight response so whenever there is a threatening situation this system will respond by what it does it it increase the heart rate it will activate the sweat glands it will increase the blood flow and it will also dilate the pupils it also slows the bodily processes that are less important in emergencies such as the digestion so this is what is the sympathetic nervous system next i will talk about is the parasympathetic nervous system so it is just the opposite that we have studied. So it relaxes the individual once the emergency has passed. So when there is a threatening situation, the sympathetic nervous system will increase the heart rate. It will increase the sweat. So these were the parts of the sympathetic nervous system. And once the situation is passed, this nervous system will help the person to relax. It will aim to maintain the normal bodily functions by decreasing the activity and it will maintain it. So it will reduce the heart rate. It will stop the body from sweating. It will decrease the blood flow. So basically it will relax the person that have faced the threatening situation. After threatening situation, these, this system will work and relaxes the person. So this was all about the human neural system. These are some of the references.